So we're in Barcelona for Mobile World Congress 2022. I'm here with Abdu Mudazir, Group CTO at Deutsche Telekom. Abdu, great to see you again. Thanks so much for joining us. Great to see you too. So can you tell us about your new role as Group CTO at Deutsche Telekom and what the biggest challenges you think you're going to face in this role? Actually, it's the best way to start this role. If you see uh, in Barcelona, um, you could say either it's time to run away uh, because of the, you know, the magnitude of challenges that we face, but it's also it's time to really jump in because it's the best time to be in the role of technology leadership, to be honest. Uh, why our, the importance of our network has never been pronounced as it is right now, with the need for resilient network that performs with no stop, with the need to drive innovation coming through organic pressure to be better and serve our customers even better because they rely more and more in us as telecos. And you've seen that through the pandemics, you see that through the catastrophic war that we've seen and also through the external pressures that we are facing from competitions that are coming from adjacent industries, which I pretty much welcome because that really pushes us forward. So for me, there are a number of challenges that we as an industry are facing. If we try to make sure that we don't really disaggregate ourselves, disjointly push initiatives, but coordinate and make sure that we have customers in focus, best customer experience, then those are for me the challenges that will bring us forward. Okay, all right. Uh, you mentioned so many pressures on the entire industry there, but I think the industry is ready to rise up to it and face it after the last couple of years of proving itself. So. Absolutely, it's actually been a fantastic uh, couple of years for us, even though it was really catastrophic. We've seen how important our infrastructure is. We've seen also how important our job is, it's so easy to motivate our employees right now because they know what they do matters and it matters for life. It's not so much about a luxury good and uh, I'm glad that we are rising up as an industry and it's great to see also a lot of us rising up together. Absolutely. So I mean there's a, a lot of things changing in the industry that so sort of the, the, the dynamics are changing and, and one of those is kind of the relationship between the communications and cloud, which used to be you know, a little further apart than they are now. Uh, how is Deutsche Telekom going to utilize cloud platforms and introduce automation to help transform its operations? And will this in you, uh, involve the use of public cloud as well as private cloud platforms? There are, that's an excellent question. There are a number of facets in there. So let me start maybe from automation. And then let me debug from the beginning the misperception that we have that when we talk about radical automation, we don't mean to push radical automation just because of efficiency. Efficiency will be a byproduct that we will definitely gain. But radical automation allows us to respond to customer demand much faster. We talk about the agility. But today, our network requirement, if you have a typical customer requirement, it takes two years sometimes to introduce new features. And radical automation allows us to shorten that cycle significantly. Radical automation allows us to really do a lot more tests than we are used to in a manual test. That makes our network much more resilient, which we have underscored how important it is to really work on that. So we drive radical automation because it brings value to our customer. It makes our network really resilient and it makes us faster in responding to customer demand. And of course, it brings also efficiency. So for that, we are aggressively pursuing this radical automation across the uh, value chain. I mean, if you look at what we're doing in our next generation IMS project in the fixed access, we are, I'm so proud to see that a lot of operators are coming up to us actually asking, how did you do it? How are you doing it? We're not done, right? So that's, that's a journey that we've started. We've been able to automate significantly, as uh, Claudia Neymar usually puts it, uh, hyperscaler-like automation, but with the reliability of the network. 
and, and this is what we have achieved. We drive that across the network. We are going in the uh, 5G core in a fully automated operation mode, and we are going also to the run and other part of the network, including the fixed access. And the way we do this is through a unified framework. And if we talk about the challenge within, and I spoke about the challenges we face uh, as a CTO from the entire industry, but within Deutsche Telekom, one of the key challenges we also have is to harmonize our requirement across the operation unit and make sure that we are able to serve all different scales of our operation units which means with the ability to scale up and scale down solutions, right. but bring in homogeneity. And so automation, critical. Cloud, absolutely important. Why? Because if you are pushing radical automation, then the cloudification allows you to automate the entire network function in a much simplified way and learn from those IT players who have automated radically. And so, we are also driving cloudification, and it happens also across the network. And now, if you say private or public, frankly speaking, it is about what the workloads really require. Okay. And if, we're, if I'm talking about the IT workload, we are happy cooperating with the hyperscaler, the public cloud provider. We are working significantly, actually, today in our IT workload. If you look at the data and uh, AI space, also they are very much advanced, and this brings value to us and to our customers, so we work with the public cloud. When you come to the network space, it is as much a challenge for the public cloud as it is for us. However, we've been in this journey a bit longer in a private cloud offering, so we will be working with all of them trying to make sure that the public cloud solution, and by the way, public cloud does not necessarily mean it will be deployed in the public uh, uh, network. It can also be on-prem solution of a public cloud, and that they need to be network ready for such a high I.O. intensive workloads. And so it depends on the TCO, it depends on the performance, but we're not shying away from working with anyone, uh, any partner. So uh, a lot of changing relationships and moving parts in the industry. Uh, how does this impact how Deutsche Telekom works with partners and suppliers? And will this kind of shift to greater automation and the greater use of uh, cloud platforms um, broaden the potential ecosystem of partners and suppliers that you could work with? And absolutely, I mean, thank you so much. You gave me part of the answer already. So. Um, for us, how does this change the partner landscape? Let me, let me answer that first, because I think we are used to, as an industry, doing RFQ, buying boxes, operating boxes. Now, if you're talking about a cloudified world, where you might even have to take up partially the role of an integrator, and really also define your automation framework where you want the suppliers to use and what you want them to use. So it's not anymore I buy from the supplier and I deploy it. It becomes more a really hyper uh, uh, collaboration. Now, it depends where in the network, and let's be really clear, if we look at what we're doing in our A4, Access 4.0 initiative, for example, we go for what we call a back model. We don't buy, but we don't make, we buy, we back. Yeah. So we work together with our partners to make sure that the vision that we have, where we are very much clear where we want to be, that we can reach there jointly. So indeed, the way we work with partners is changing, and we have strengthened our partner management organization, strategic partner management organization to allow for that. And the role of automation will become extremely significant because the more partners you're trying to stitch together, the more complexity that you're taking on board yeah. that can only be viable if you are going back to the radical automation. So one of the big trends across the whole industry at the moment is towards disaggregation, disaggregation of networks. 
Uh, what needs to happen next to be able to accelerate Deutsche Telekom's disaggregation efforts relating not only to the open RAN but also what you're doing in your fixed access network? So, as you touched on that, right, so when we talk about disaggregation, we really talk about disaggregating the entire value chain and actually going beyond the network, right? So in the router space already, we are trying to open this black box and driving with partners together the RDKB and making sure that we have a white box that we can integrate. And this is what we're doing. And then we go down to the radio access network. Uh, it's not a secret that we are an extremely uh, uh, vocal proponent of the ORAN initiative and we are driving that because we strongly believe this brings a value to our customer. It secures our business continuity. It allows for a vibrant ecosystem. And this also extends to the fixed access, as you uh, mentioned, in the fixed access space, in the OLT, in the BNG space, we are also driving our A4 initiative where we have made a significant step forward with partners together where we are now really productization uh, stage this year with scale. And so we are working with all partners. The common theme across all this disaggregation is that you need a strong partnering approach. You need an ecosystem of players. It's not enough to have the typical suppliers providing you a disaggregated software. You need the hardware players, the white box uh, uh, hardware players, the chipset players, the uh, uh, controlling, so the SDN controllers. All this needs to work together. So that requires extreme partner, uh, partnering approach. And it really requires also working across the industry. It's not enough to focus on the teleco, typical uh, teleco industry suspect. That's why it's really great to see in Barcelona a lot of wider ecosystem players taking a significant uh, middle stage, and we welcome that. So it requires a vibrant ecosystem. It requires, as I go back again, this radical automation. That's why we are proud in pushing the SMO in, uh, um, in the Oran space, but also we're doing exactly the same with uh, automation in the fixed space. So you need to automate. If you disaggregate, let's be honest and clear, we will introduce complexity unless we radically automate. And that's really required. And cloud will help us, especially in the edge, because all these uh, um, disaggregation elements we are talking, they are highly distributed uh, network component, which means an edge uh, cloud deployment will accelerate as well the um, uh, the disaggregated deployment. So the, the, the architecture and the nature of networks is changing. What does this mean for uh, sort of a critical metrics such as um, uh, uh, power usage, for example? Is energy efficiency becoming a, 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 a bigger thing for you to focus on? And are there any particular technologies or processes or tools that can help you, um, you know, increase the energy efficiency of the networks as they change? Thank you really for that question because um, I think our group CEO has a very strong word, what he calls greenwashing, right? So the industry is talking a lot about green, green, but I think we need to be responsible when it comes to our sustainability target and commitment because we're not just committing for the sake of marketing, we are committing for our generation and the next generation to come because it's really our responsibility to preserve the earth as we know it. And most importantly, we also see this as a business opportunity. And so it will be a business opportunity for uh, a lot of players. Energy efficiency is extremely important. Now, when we go to a general purpose hardware, there is a challenge. It, is not energy efficient. That's why we work together with partners. It depends on which part of the disaggregated network. If I look at the Access 4.0, because of the architecture that we have introduced, spine leaf architecture, we have been able to save significantly the energy consumption because you don't have to have a full uh, blown out BNG in every site. You have a leaf and the spine will be limited. And this allows us a significant energy efficiency. We haven't achieved, we have not achieved that in the Oran space, and we're driving that. And if you see what we've done together with our partners, Intel, in the BBU space, in particular in the distributed unit, we've shown that 
through a really strong collaboration and uh, um, uh, software development in layer one flex run space, we could actually save also energy in there. But we are not there yet. And we mean business, we really uh, take this seriously. And we work on, not only on the energy efficiency aspect, we also try to address the bigger industry problem of reusable energy. And this is so important. We have a clear target we are driving to, and we have to address the challenges that are uh, um, standing on our way, such as storage. And you've seen our partners uh, that we're working with to address also really uh, energy storage challenges. So all in all, we are very serious about sustainability. It is in our board and senior management target because we really want to make sure that we are delivering. And we will not be uh, greenwashing, but we will be delivering. And are there any other particular challenges that, that this journey you're on to, 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 to bring new types of networks and new types of uh, operational processes, a any additional challenges that that brings with it that you're having to deal with? Indeed, we do. Actually, one of the uh, most difficult uh, thing in this entire digital teleco journey that we are in, that you've heard, I mean, our strategy has always been to be the uh, leading integrated uh, European operator, now the leading digital teleco, and that requires a transformation through disaggregation, automation, cloudification. Transformation at the center of any transformation are humans, people, yeah. and that requires skill, that requires mindset, and we are working on both and we are not there. And that's actually one of the most important challenges. We are lucky we have one of the top talented organization with huge engineering uh, capability, but we need to continue to invest on skill transformation and mindset transformation and also lean processes, which has grown as a brown uh, field operator over the years. So those are the challenges that we have to address, which I believe every operator every brown operator, a brownfield operator has to address as well. So, you know, we're back here at Mobile World Congress, face to face, lots of people to meet, too many people to meet during the day. So what happens in the evening is just as important as what happens between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. So when you're going out to, to dinner, to, to a bar maybe, or to a restaurant in Barcelona, what is your go-to tapas of choice? And what are you going to have to drink with it? What, 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 what's top of your lists? Oh, that, that, that's a, a very good question indeed. Actually, uh, the evening is as important as uh, uh, during the day because you get to meet really good friends. Um, tapas choice. I like uh, tapas that's uh, hot. Um, so anything that's uh, hot, I, I, I love to enjoy. And I'm very easy when it comes to drink. So I don't drink alcohol, so which means nothing beats water for me. So sorry, boring, but uh, <laughs> that's the reality. Excellent. Well, that, that makes a change from the, 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 the Vino Tinto and the Estrella we've been hearing about this week. So uh, good selection there. Abdu, fantastic to have you here with us today. Thanks for taking the time out and uh, look forward to talking to you again as you move further into this role as Group CTO at DT. Thanks very much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.